Hi there, this is John Levensold for KillerPHP.com and today what I'm going to be doing is looking at HTML5. Now uh, HTML5, I don't know if you've heard about this, is a new version of HTML or XHTML and with that comes uh, a whole kind of new way of thinking about markup as well as the assumption that you're going to be dealing with CSS3 which is the latest version of CSS. Now um, this is going to be sort of a multi-part video series where we're going to talk about um, XHTML and you know what web standards look like today, where they're probably going to be headed within the next uh, two to five years, I would say, uh, what some of these kind of next generation browsers can offer, and how you can prepare for that as a web designer and web developer. So. The first thing I'm going to be doing is in this video just looking at what XHTML looks like today. Uh, here I have a very simple, uh, basically a simple HTML page. You can see here, I'm just going to zoom this out a little bit. So you've got, you know, my wonderful website. You've got, you know, a post title, some two column layouts here, a pull quote over here, a sidebar. Uh, so you've got all this, you know, stuff happening. Uh, pretty standard, fair. And if we look at how it's constructed, you can probably find some areas where this could be, in fact, improved. And I'm going to show you how you can take a site like this and, uh, you know, with a little bit of work, make it look, uh, you know, just as good, if not better, with HTML5. So I'm going to show you in another example, which we're going to build up ourselves, this same website except now we're not using any images at all you can see that we've got the same sort of visual effect we've got rounded corners and everything we even have our pull quote and you're gonna look at the the markup and we're gonna build the HTML5 and look at the CSS as well and just see how much easier it is to really sort of prototype a website when you don't have to jump into Photoshop just to get little effects like rounded corners and gradients in there so in looking at this uh, template, you can see that we've got sort of a background here. If I right click on this image and I say view background image, you can see that this is just kind of a, a gradient. Oftentimes, if you want to have like a header on a website, you, you know, you're going to be creating these rounded corners manually. You're going to want to have, um, you know, some gradient effects to give it a bit of depth and so on and so forth. All these effects in XHTML and CSS2 have to be done manually. You know, you look at this uh, this header, this top nav bar. If I view the background image here, you can see I'm using what's called a sprite, where we have multiple versions of the background image. And then, if I just quickly jump into the CSS, you can see here that I'm using this top nav.jpg file. And when we hover over it, we're using the same background, but then we move the background image so that we get a different part of that same background image. And this is called a sprite. So the hover and the active state are simply the same image. We just, you know, jump it up a bit and then we get that background image. Um, now, just something to know about this series, some tools that we're going to be using. We're going to be using the latest version of Firefox primarily. We're also going to look at Google Chrome or which is you know, essentially WebKit. You could use Safari instead of Google Chrome if you want. Uh, we're going to be using the web developer toolbar here and there just to help us navigate the, the DOM, the HTML markup. And I'm going to be using a tool called BB Edit, and really it's just a text editor. You can use any other text editor. If you're on a Windows machine, you could use Notepad++, you could use Dreamweaver. Um, really, anything goes. So, Let's take a look at how this page is built. You'll notice that at the top we have this XML version encoding UTF business. And what this is, is it basically says, hey, this is an XML document. In other words, it's got these opening and closing tags, and at the end of the day it follows this model of XML, where you have a tag, and the tag has a corresponding closing tag, or you have an opening of a tag and then you have what's called a self-closing tag where it ends with a slash and a greater than symbol. Uh, you've got attributes and then those attributes have values 
and inside of a tag you can have other tags. So this is straight XML and it is a subset of XML called XHTML and that's what we call a doc type. Um, here you'll see that we're describing that doc type with this XMLNS reference which basically points to the World Wide Web Consortium which is a group of uh, nerds that basically dictate how we should be writing our web pages and making sure that they're all standardized and then we've got our head section and our body section and that's about it.